Hello everyone, this is Scyther88. It's been quite a while, actually it's been around 3 years since I posted something relevant. But I am back now and I have loads of new content coming for this channel. Now before I begin I just want to say thank you guys for your words of kindness and encouragement. You guys are seriously awesome. Now without further ado, let's get started. So today we'll be talking about troubleshooting PCR reactions. Since PCR is one of the most commonly used laboratory techniques, I figure it would be a good place to start. Now, if you are not familiar with PCR, I have videos in my channel that explains it in greater detail. So, go ahead and check them out. Okay, so this video is for people having issues with their PCR reactions, whether they are amplifying DNA for sequencing, cloning, or uh, site-directed mutagenesis. Um, we're going to have a couple of assumptions before we begin. Um, let's see if I can get this to work. Okay, there we go. Um, so, assumptions. First of all, we're going to assume your PCR primers are properly designed for your experiment. We're going to assume that your DNA template is correct and not degraded. Now, remember, these are important steps because if you start with garbage, you're going to end up with garbage. Uh, we're also going to assume that you're making your PCR cocktail correctly. What I, which, what I mean by that is proper pipetting techniques and etc. Of course you have a I, we're going to assume you have a properly functioning PCR machine as well. Of course that would definitely help. <laughs> and the last thing which might honestly be the most important thing I, um, is the you want to be somewhat lucky right? Um, having lady luck on your side is never a bad thing. Okay so with that um, we're going to go ahead and move on to a, uh, the protocol that I usually use. So here we go. So this is a pretty standard PCR protocol and uh, this is based off of the uh, high fidelity, the fusion high fidelity um, polymerase from uh, NEB and that's the polymerase that I always use and from my experience it is very reliable. Um, I'm going to assume once again that you understand these steps and uh, if you don't I have videos explaining PCR so check them out if you need a refresher. Now the main point of variability is going to come at the annealing temperature right and uh, I usually start uh, well generally speaking you want to start um, a couple of degrees lower uh, than the average of your uh, primers melting temperature. So both of your primers melting temperatures should be similar to each other. So basing the annealing temperature on the average should be just fine. Now I usually start with 60 degrees Celsius because I just found that to, to, uh, to work. Uh, uh, I just have found that to be a very good uh, starting point. Okay, the other variable point is the extension time. Now do not overlook this. Do not. Because for example, amplifying a plasmid will take a much longer time than a 700 base pair fragment. Now generally, you want to go 30 seconds for every thousand nucleotides. Alrighty then, um, let's go ahead and now um, look at some scenarios for troubleshooting. So let's go ahead and begin. Let's say you run your PCR um, reaction and then you run in 5 microliters of that on a DNA gel and you want to see what it looks like, you want to check it out. So this is scenario one, you get one band of the expected size and uh, you get some primer dimers which is very common, it doesn't matter if you see them or not, um, I usually see them so I just include it here. Um, so what's the troubleshooting step? Well actually you don't need to troubleshoot if this is where you're seeing right. Um, yeah, so you, so you successfully amplified your uh, fragment of interest and congratulations you can now turn off this video and go ahead and uh, do your next part of the experiment <laughs> okay right so this is obviously the ideal situation let's look at scenario two scenario two we get uh, no bands okay nothing at all maybe some primer dimers but that's about it um, what I suggest is that number one you want to go ahead and check your primers and templates and you want to retry your experiment that doesn't work, maybe you can try increasing the template, um, your DNA template. Maybe you just don't have enough DNA. Now I personally usually use around 10 nanograms when I'm running, uh, uh, when I'm using my plasmids, plasmids as uh, my templates. Now if it still fails, you can try lowering the annealing temperature um, because your, the annealing temperature 
the annealing the temperature they're using right now may just be too high uh, for your primers to stably you know bind to your template. So lowering it will promote binding. Let's look at scenario three. Um, you get a band, but it's the wrong size. Okay, so what do we do? Um, first, we get the usual primer dimers, but what do we do about this situation? Again, check the primers and templates and retry your experiment. This time, you might want to try raising your annealing temperature. And uh, the reason why is because this is definitely non-specific binding, and raising it can help limit that for sure. Scenario 4. We have multiple bands and the usual primer dimers. Um, again, I said this many times before, but this is very important. Check the primers and templates and you want to retry the experiment if those two things are good. This is another case of non-specific binding. So go ahead and raise the temperature, raise the annealing temperature and see if that solves the issue. Okay, scenario five, we have a smear. Now, I personally have not seen this very often. I know people that have seen this um, fairly often, so I guess it really depends. Um, in my opinion, and uh, my experience that when I have seen it, this is this is some serious issues with your primers or templates that can cause severe non-specific amplification. So please check your primers and your template to make sure they're okay. Um, this is again could also just be very. Um, this is again is could just be a case of you need to raise the annealing temperature, you know, to limit this really bad non-specific binding. Um, again, I don't see this very often, so um, so yeah, so I don't have a whole lot to say about this. But number one, number two, definitely will help this situation. Okay, now let's move on to scenario six. So this is something I see quite often, actually. Um, you you have two or more multiple bands of clean separation. So let's say your um, DNA band of interest is between 1.5 and 2 kbs. Okay, so it's right here. Um, but you have some other bands, you know, of lower molecular weight. You might something of higher. But the point is that they're pretty well, pretty well separated. Now, why am I emphasizing on that? Well, I'll get to that in a second. So you want to go through the checklist once again. At this time, I pretty much sound like a broken record. So um, just go ahead and check your primers. Go ahead and check your template. Retry the experiment. Now. You want to raise the neon temperature because what we're getting is again non-specific binding. Now the third step is why I emphasize cleanly separating um, uh, at the beginning uh, of scenario six. Reason is because, for example, if you need that fragment for sequencing or you need it for cloning for your next step, you can run this on a gel, cut it out, and then gel purify it, right? And then you can take that and do your sequencing or cloning. Now, the issue with that is that when you gel purify something, you're going to lose a significant amount of DNA compared to, for example, a PCR purification. So if you need tons of DNA for cloning, then this might be an issue. Now, you can resolve this by running multiple reactions um, and then pulling the bands together to increase your DNA concentration. And I have found that to work very effectively. Okay, so in summary, Make sure your primers and templates are good. I can't stress this more. Uh, I can't stress this enough. Remember, garbage in, garbage out. Next, you want to make sure the extension time is sufficient to cover the length of your product. Okay. Now we want to lower the annealing temperature if you're not getting any bands, um, or if you or and or you can increase your uh, template concentration, uh, your DNA uh, template concentration. Again, I usually use around 10 nanograms, and it seems to um, be a pretty good amount. You want to raise the annealing temperature if you're getting non-specific bands or smearing to eliminate, you know, extraneous bands or bands that are completely not even the right size. Um, if you're just getting one uh, one single band of the non uh, of the wrong size, for example. And uh, the, so when I'm lowering or raising the annealing temperatures, I usually like to do five degrees increments. So for example, if I start at 60, 60 degrees, I might try 65 or 55 um, next time, depending on the situation. Now, before I forget, the most important, um, most important point to, to keep in mind is you want to try, retry, and try again, okay? 
you will succeed. You have to be tenacious, right? I mean, um, just keep at it and you will get it to work. Sometimes it takes me four or five tries just to get one single reaction to work. Yes, it is very, very frustrating, but um, stick with it, be tenacious, and you will succeed. Now, there are exceptions to this rule, of course. Um, some plasmids are unusually GC rich, um, so it makes it very difficult to do PCR on them. Um, uh, sometimes not even possible. Let me think. Um, for example, right, so for example, I guess uh, the PDZ plasmids for um, influenza reverse genetics, um, it is very difficult to uh, do meningenesis on and it might just not work at all. But again, I don't want to get into that right now because these are the exceptions really and they're not very common and I just, I might save them for a different video. Okay, so anyway, I hope this video was helpful and please leave your comments below. Tell me what tricks have you found um, uh, in your laboratory that helped getting your PCR uh, reactions to work. Let me know. Uh, please subscribe if you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. This is Scyther88 signing off. Until next time.